Hello and welcome to our latest instalment of our Road to Cheltenham series. A two weeks and counting until the tape rise and that huge roar that signifies the start of the greatest show on a turf. I'd like to say, join us always, is Joel Ross to look at the novice hurdles uh, with this uh, week. And of course, PA's Nick Robson uh, as well to give us insight on the most fabulous of four days. What we're going to do this week, we're going to review the action at Kempton over the weekend. We should have a couple of points to say uh, towards the novice hurdles. Uh, and we'll also hear from Nick Schofield, who's got a couple of big rides on the week so we'll get his thoughts on those uh, as well before we hear from the guys in the studio though as always we'll pinpoint you some of the market movers from the last couple of days and uh, two of these won over the weekend in the juvenile division so we saw Knight Salute, we're going to talk about him shortly, uh, in the uh, Adonis Hurdle win very impressively for Milton Harris and Paddy Brennan. He's been clipped into 10 to 1 from 14 to 1 now. And in the uh, Triumph Hurdle as well, Iker Allen, who bounced back to form to win in Ireland. He's 12 to 1 from 20 to 1. He's also 7 to 1 from 12 for the Juvenile Handicap if they choose to go this route. Interesting money for Appreciate It as well in the Champion Hurdle. All the 4 to 1 has now gone. He's into 7 to 2 after some very positive words from Willie Mullins over the weekend. And the Fox Hunters, Bob & Co has been nibbled 8 to 1 from 10 to 1 for David Maxwell, who's won on three of his last six rides. So that's the market movers for you. And we'll get stuck into the opener uh, of those because Knight Salute was very impressive in winning the Adonis Hurdle at Kempton at the weekend. Uh, Mick Paddy Brennan uh, said he's never been so fast over hurdles. And also want to mention Teddy Blue, who was second as well. Yeah, the second may well have won if he jumped the last... Well, either of the last two, well enough. But Knight Salute is a really likeable type, isn't he? He does everything right. As Paddy says, he's very quick getting from one side of a hurdle to the other. That'll stand him in good stead. He might lack a bit of class and scope compared to, to the Irish favourites that are in the race, like Yvor Barn and, and Phil Dor and Pied Piper. But you can't argue with what he's done. He's five from five. He's won at Cheltenham. He's multiple graded winner already. He said he reminds you of a former winner as well, doesn't he? He does, yeah. To me, he's just a bit like catch it. I'm not saying he's going to go and win a champion hurdle or anything, or even the triumph, but he's just he's not getting that much credit or love out there at the minute, and you just can't crab what he's done. Milton Harris is flying. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story as well, and hopefully we're going to uh, send Rupert Bell to... Uh, to yeah, see Milton Harris yeah. at some point, which would be a great story as well. Uh, exactly what Nick said, five from five, look, looks great. Um, Paddy Brennan over the line. I always think when jockeys do the yield, mm. you know, I was, I was always told as a young lad that's when they've had a few quid on, but as we know, jockeys don't bet, <laughs> and not allowed to bet, but Paddy Brennan looked like he'd paid for an extension there. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he thinks he's on a gun, and I think he thinks he's got a live chance, and that's yeah. probably why he's punching the head. Just mention Teddy Blue as well, Gary Moore in great form, and if he did jump last, he got a lot closer. Yeah, he would. He went to, what, 1-6 in running or something like that in the exchanges. And uh, um, to be fair, there was not a lot to take out the race apart from that. There was that expensive um, horse with 250 Your grand. Ple pleasant man. Yeah. The Nichols horse as well. There was, there was that. Um, what else? There was um, the one of Nichols that was given a very oh, wide. Yeah, we flew him, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't think he did anything at Cheltenham. Yeah, it's... Um, um, talking of the juveniles, and Care Allen as well. Bombed out at the Dublin Racing Festival, he won over the weekend and he's been back for both the Triumph, where they've got Vauban and the Handicap as well. Yeah, I can't work out where that horse is going to go. I mean, if you look at Leopardstown, um, uh, where he won by three lengths, he beat... Bra uh, Brazil was back in fourth, mm. I think it was, that day. Um, you know, it, it has been beaten by Vauban and Phil Dore as well, but um, yeah, it, again, it's one of those horses that looks really, really good, but what, what did he beat on that day? Yeah, he disappointed only when the gun was put to his head. Yeah, he did, have a, he did have a bit of an excuse at the Dublin Racing Festival. He, had, he, he was really keen early on and, and, and threw his chance away there. And, and Willie had said that he, he expected a completely different proposition this time around. That's what, he, what we got. I can't think of another JP horse for the Triumph. That might sway them to go for yeah. that. You mentioned Brazil. I've got, I've got uh, Fred Wins down. I had um, well, Brazil they, for that. And, uh, is it Champion Green as well? Yeah, well, they're, they're obviously not scared of having a few runners in a oh, race no. like the Fred Winter, but without a Triumph Force, that, they might just say, let a care, Alan go in the Triumph and we'll, yeah. we'll try and get Brazil in the, in the, for the Fred Winter. What wins a Triumph for you? Um, did I not put that up as a charity bet before? Did I not oh, say Vauban? Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, Vauban, I mean, I, every time I keep, going, I keep going back to it and some of these novice, um, novice handicaps, I'm, looking, I'm, just, I'm just looking. It's, again, we're at that stage where everything's doubly entered uh, and it's just, it's just very, very difficult at the minute. But I, I did go Vauban at a bigger price. And you were quite keen on him as well, weren't you? Yeah, I do like him, but it was hard not to be impressed by... Uh, was it Phil Dore or Pied Piper that Pied was Piper at Cheltenham? Pied Piper yeah. at Cheltenham mm. that day. That was very, very impressive. Mm. Going back beat Phil Dole there by what three? He did, he did, yeah. It's, um, and what's, what's the horse that, that uh, was placed at forty-two on the one that Danny Mullins, Mullins rides, a French horse? 
Um, oh, what was it? Uh, it uh, it's, I know because uh, it was the French entry <laughs> for the Eurovision Song Contest in 2006. <laughs> and it's that Il était temps. Is oh, it? yeah, Il était temps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking at that. I was looking at that, and that's been quietly nibbled over the last couple of days. Yeah, it's just yeah. And uh, Danny, Danny Mullins on a podcast as well. Um, I mean, he's not going to say all his rubbish, is he? But yeah. um, he was—he he seemed a little bit more confident than I thought he would be. Oh, we are then a couple then for the triumph. And as John mentioned, then yeah, Rupert Bell. Uh, we've done a few stable tours for us ahead of the festival. He's going to go to Milton Harris, and we'll see lots more from Nice Lou in the build-up to the Cheltenham Festival. Here's just a little sneak preview of where Rupert Bell has been in the last few days. Well, it's been an absolute joy to come to Emma Lavelle's yard this morning and been filming, and this is the wonderful Paisley Park. Sorry, mate, I've got no polos. He's eaten enough, but he was in absolutely wonderful form on the gallops this morning. An absolute joy to see him. And, of course, he's going to go for the stairs hurdle, but looking at him, ears prick, he is as right as rain. Can't wait to see him running at Cheltenham on the 17th of March. Should be fantastic. Well done, boy. Thank you. Yeah, what a great story that would be, of course, if Paisley Park he could roll back the ears and uh, reenact his 2019 triumph in the uh, Stayers Hurdle. Uh, going back to the weekend, then, we've mentioned the Adonis Lusley Dovecoat to talk about. We won't see Orkin Risk at Charlton, I don't think. I don't think he's going to go for the counties. It looks like he's going to be Aintree bound for Chris Gordon. Just a little word on shall we have one more. He may be going to the Supreme, but is he jumping a worry? Right, I've got a handicap, well, you? They've got a handicap route, but needs to brush that jumping up. I mean, I think you were saying to me, would... Would he have won if uh, if it have um, jumped the last two? I think it got closer. Well, he um, jumped the last two like he had had one. More. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say that. <laughs> but uh, let, let's be honest about it. I think uh, the, the horse in front, really, really game horse, uh, wasn't wasn't stopping. Uh, he missed two out himself. Um, but but no, I think a lot of people were saying, you know, uh, shall we have one more? Would have won that. And I, I you, know, you can never tell, can you? But I, I I wouldn't have thought so. No, any festival clues from the Dove Cut? No, I don't think so. I think I can risk it. As Jill says, he's improving. Really likable. So only had a few runs over hurdles, was in bumper still in November. Jumps well, Chris Gordon's got a, a really nice horse on his hand, but if you're talking about even county hurdles, I think he's got a lot to find. So I think it's a wise decision, skip it, go to Aintree, fresh horse. There's still plenty more to come from him, he's a nice young horse. One of those ones that we like, Matt, just uh, sorry to interrupt, it. I like to move it. Is that still in the county hurdle as well? He is. Because yeah, that, that's one of, one of ours that's been on the tracker for a long time. Yeah. We and were I talking think, about that earlier yeah. with Nick and I. The last day was the day, wasn't it? And mm. it's um, yeah, it's typical Twist and Davis mo. Yep. Interesting. Keep an eye on that one. He's go supreme when he go for the county. Uh, right. So that's a review of the weekend. There isn't many more festival clues uh, to come if at all. Now there's a couple at the weekend, but that is done. So it's all going to be previews from here on in. And one there. Uh, as aspect that we haven't really talked about is the novice hurdle. So that's what we're going to do now with Nick and Joel. Starting with the curtain raiser, arguably, Nick, we talked about this earlier, the race of the festival could be bang from the gun, the first one up. Yeah, it looks like Sir Gerhard's going to go Ballymore now. So in the Supreme, we're going to have Constitution Hill, John Bond, Dysart Dynamo, Kill Crook. I mean, any of yeah, those five, I mean, watering. yeah, it's, it's really good. That's before you've even thrown in a few, few of the Mullins horses that have only had one or possibly even two runs likes of state man that won yesterday so it's absolutely wide open i personally think constitution's hill now is a very skinny price just because of the strength of the race you went to see him last week didn't you yeah i mean so laid back i mean there's not much of him just a little power pack of a of a specimen but when you put him next to john bond as, as nicky henderson did john bond is an absolute pitcher you you stereotypical nicky henderson horse loads of scope about him you can see him going over fences next year even um, of the two, at the prices for me, I would be siding with John Bond just because he's just got more experience in the bank. Yeah, and that race at Haydock, who was crabbed originally, Joel, but mm. uh, the fact he's had a race, he's had to knuckle down, he's yeah. had trouble in running, that's made a bit of a man of him. These others have been cantering round and winning on the ride on. Yeah, I think, I think um, that the sweating thing was going to worry me. Um, you know, about John Bond? Yeah, yeah, sweats, yeah. Up at, sweats up at the start. Like we, say, like we say, when kebab shop's closed, because <laughs> it sweats up at the start and you've got that big crowd at Cheltenham. And there was that, it was a non-story really, uh, but you probably know more than me, Nick, about the... Um, well, 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 they thought yeah. the, there was a big rumour at the weekend all wasn't well. Yeah, and well, it drifted and it was, it was one of those... Out to 10 to 1 yeah. at one point, but it happens every year. It's, it, it's it people does, playing it's part, games. It's part of it now, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's people playing games, trying to second-guess connections yeah. as well, putting up money to back at You also prices. mentioned, because like, you said about the preliminaries, they, could have, they think they they've do. got it. They think they've got it 
under control with mm. it being the first race of the festival they can get him settled yeah. into a box a long time before they normally would be able to if it was the middle race of a, of the second day or something yeah and obviously he can wear the hood in all the preliminaries he'll be last in the paddock i mean but, the, ta the talent's there there's, there's no yeah. doubt there's no doubt about it and it's, it's probably i'm just looking at it because i'm not I'm not back, John Bonnet. Uh, you know, sexy prices. Um, so you, you can't you can't crowd that. And we go back to the Haydock thing. It's you know, it, it looks a lot better now. I mean, I the, so. the word is he, he worked with Epiton at the weekend yeah. and, and worked better than her, and she's a champion hurdle winner. Yeah, so. there we are. Interesting. Though, and so. uh, one of my charity bets as well. Yeah. So quick word on the script. Name for the Supreme? It'd be John Bond for me at the price. Uh, Dyson Dynamo for me, um, simply because of that, you know, the Moscow Flyer. Uh, 19 lengths by that, and then you just go with Mullins with uh, Vittor and Duvan. Well, both yeah, both three... took that and then went on to it. Uh, well, and, and without sound like Nathan O'Brien, it's like, you know, blessed with natural speed, you know, <laughs> as, as they all are. Mullins and Henderson have won like, not, seven of the last nine Supremes between them, and they're going to be on to the Ballymore now because this could really cut up. A lot of these are in the Albert Bart and the Supreme as well, and this could be a small field. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be many. We can think of you know, Sigurhard will be there, he'll be walking on air, mm. stage star possibly. Journey he's not been me. definitely being given the green light. Uh, Journey with me is not definitely going to go for this just as yet. After that, you're struggling to think of of a lively runner, aren't you? So there might only be seven or eight in there. I, I just think this is Sagar hard to lose. I think he's got so much in hand over all the others. Yes, he doesn't hurdle great, but it hasn't stopped plenty of others. Fahin used to just kick him out of the ground, yeah. and he went on to win this and go and win a champion hurdle. Wouldn't surprise me at all if this time next year Sagar Hard's among the favourites for the for the champion hurdle. Yeah, I know you like him, but you've also got a squeak for walking on there. Yeah, 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 I, I wrote down pretty much what you said, so Gerhard turns up here wins. I mean, I mean, I think it's a really, really um, great bet for the uh, festival, and walking on air as well. I uh, watched that Newbury race again, Just it was flawless, flawless, uh, for Dorian Tabor and Henderson, I watched an interview from Henderson as well. Um, he's doing all the rounds today, and um, it doesn't really give a lot away, but it was like saying, um, uh, Doreen would like it to run here. Yeah, he just wasn't 100% happy with him after yeah. the new run. He would have liked yeah. to have got another, another run into, run into him. him. Yeah, yeah. But but Nicker de Boinville assured him it, he said he yeah. jumped so well first That's time. That's fine, but, don't worry about it. I can yeah. sort it, love. Yeah. <laughs> no, not a problem. So walk on there and, uh, yes, again, on the two for the Ballymore. Let's get the thoughts of Nick Schofield uh, then. Obviously, I talked to him about his uh, novice hurdle hopes. He's going to ride a nice run the Albert Ball. But I caught up with him first of all to mention the Supreme, the Ballymore, and the Triumph hurdle. That was a very. Um, tough performance and it's got a very good record going into the festival um you know he did nothing wrong has he done it as impressive as some of the others uh, i'm not sure um i've just been a massive constitution hill fan to be honest um what he did at sandown will be on heavy ground but he just looks he looks unbelievable to me what he's what he's achieving and um speaking to nico he didn't he's not one for words but he really likes him as well so um you know, for me, he's a standout one. Yes, he is favourite in his state, but it'd be great if the English could just get off on the first race on the first day and, you know, um, put a marker out there. I'm a fan of stage star. Um, he's done nothing wrong this season at Newbury. He, you know, he's on his bumper form, he's got a bit to find, but he does look a really good jumper. Um, I'd say it's one of Paul Nichols' best, best chance is probably of the week. Um, and... He's done nothing wrong. His jumping seems to improve. He looks a good jumper for being five fame and glory. Um, but saying all of that, the way Sir Gerard and the, what the performances are looking like and let us down, it's, it's hard, very hard not to be impressed. Um, Sir Gerard's done nothing wrong. Um, his bumper performance is very good. Obviously, he won the champion bumper and he's, he's translated it to hurdles. Um, so it, it's really hard not to look at the Willie Mullins, you know, desert dynamo as well as he runs. Um, but it's hard to look past Sir Gerard just being a champion bumper winner and the way he's jumping. It wasn't brilliant around Leopardstown, but he's got some engine. That was Nick, uh, Nick Schofield's thoughts on those novice hurdles. Then we'll just move on to the Albert Ball over the three mile again. The entries are a little bit up in the air, aren't they? Obviously, we've got Hillcrest, uh, look like it's going to go there, but he had a hard race at Haydock. Well, you would imagine so, but I was there that day. He wasn't blowing. It was the no. only horse on the day who really ran through the line. He could have gone round again. It, I think this is it's a bit of a much freak. Much quicker time than the Rendell oh, should as well. Yeah, he would have. Yeah, I was so impressed. I hadn't been a massive Hillcrest fan until that day at Haydock, and I would normally not even consider a horse that could win at Haydock in that ground 
to be quick enough to go in and out. Have we found all the in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I just think he's a bit of a freak, this horse. Yeah. I just think he's got a massive engine. And yeah, his jumping might not be up to scratch. But the, nothing really stands out in the Albert Bartlett. There's the, there's the, the two De Bromhead horses who, who could come into it. Mm. Chantrousse won the other day. He looks an out-and-out -out stayer. And obviously Journey With Me might come here. Then you've, you're talking you about Hollow Manelas. Games and Ginto of, of the Elliot team. And Elliot's also got Manella Kruna or Kakuna. Kakuna, the two of them, yeah. The two that, that, that ran at the Dublin Racing Festival. But there's nothing in there that would make you think, if you were Henry Daly, mm, I don't really want to take that on. I think he's, I think he's got to go for it. Yeah, we he talked about it. it last week with mm. uh, with Tanya and um, Hillcrest on that on that day. You you were there. I watched it, I watched it on the telly. Uh, he took the last fright with him as well. But he's he's you know I, again we said we thought we were getting a better price if it was our horse, different colours, not Sir Trevor Hemmings um, and uh, Henry Daly, Richard Patrick. Ain't a combination that's you know Mullins and Townend. I thought we we're getting a massive price. Um, I, I, for me, I think I think it's a standout, standout bet for the Albert Bartlett. The only other one I could possibly have a look at uh, was Hollow Games for Elliot's if it goes um, improve um, for the step up and trip. That was that was the only thing. Uh, but I'm pretty pretty. We're getting to this point now where everybody's more or less on the same page. Yeah. If we go back eight weeks ago, everyone's got oh I've got one here, I've got one there. Yeah. Everybody's starting to you know come come on the same page so to speak. The, only, the next British train runner in the market after Hillcrest is Staghorn, ridden by Nick Schofield to victory all the way win in the Leamington Spa at Warwick back in January. He's quite excited about his prospects in the staying contest. He's not a typical, what I call, um, horse going into the Albert Valley. You get an Irish pointer or, um, you know, a good bumper horse. He, this one's off the flat and, um, you know, he was top class on the flat, getting ratings over well over the 100. He's had two runs over hurdles, you know, and one won them both and I felt he hit the line hard the last day at work. It is a step up in trip. Um he's sure to be in top condition from Archie Watsons who's um he's going, he had another million pound race in on the flat, you know, so there's nothing he can't do. So um but again the Irish have a strong hand on the race. Um but you know going from the English horses I, I there's no real standout from the English Hill press was good a bit on heavy ground at a haydock last week had a very hard race he'll know about that race and um whether he waits to entry i'm not sure you've got horses dan skelton's that won the heavy ground race at lingfield um as about greatness would he go a bit to find you would have thought so um of the english ones i can't see but you know the irish have got a strong hand again he's a great rider he just stays very well um you know, he's, he's took to her then very, very slickly. They've done a tremendous job with him. And, um, yeah, I should imagine he'll be forward. So, um, but he's he's not one-dimensional. So, um, I'd imagine you you just nip close to the time, you'll know what's running. You'll have a bit more of an idea. But, um, yeah, he's done nothing wrong and he deserves his crack at this race. Yeah, he's one just gallops and gallops and isn't the usual... Mo is he coming off the flat of Staghorn, but uh, he's quite hopeful of his chances. Is that him excited, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Wait for that chat show with him and Ryan Moore. <laughs> Chance. Yeah, yes, but like Nick said, I, I can't think of another horse that's come off the flat and no. and got involved in the Albert Barlet. You look at a couple of years ago, Manella, Indo and Alaho, well, they went on to win the Gold Cup and, and the Ryanair that, and dominated the, the RFA chase the year before that. So that's the type of horse you need to win the Albert Bartlett. Could Hillcrest be one of them? Yes. Could Staghorn? No. Arguably not. So that would temper enthusiasm, but it, it, it was impressive at Warwick. I mean, what that form's worth in terms of mixing it with the Irish, who knows, but he'll, he'll probably stay the trip. And he's got a bit of pace about him. You mentioned the Ryanair news is with that sort of conflate has gone ahead there for Michael O'Leary. Gordon Elliott wanted to split him and Galvin up, it sounds like. Yeah, so I was watching um, uh, the debate programme on uh, Sky Sports Racing yesterday morning and uh, Michael O'Leary was on there and I grabbed the phone, took the O2. Oh, price has gone already. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Galvin, uh, Gold Cup, and then, like you say, uh, Ryanair conflated. Right decision. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. One over a an easy three mile last time, but travelled really strongly. I think two five Ryanair, yeah, and adds a bit of spice to the race because it looked a gimme before that for Alaho, didn't it? At least he's got a, a no. Oh yeah, don't forget, don't forget Melon, don't diss the Melon. <laughs> don't diss the Melon. We love he's, got our a, he's got a proper rival to think about at least. 
We mentioned the Gold Cup as well, where Galvin's going again. We'll hear from Nick Schofield then because he's got the round on Santini. He's been placed in a previous Gold Cup behind Albon Photo. And he bounced back. Actually, he's still no back number when second to Chantry House in the Cotswold Chase. Yeah, and it's, uh, it was my first time riding him in the Cotswold Chase. Um, good run that day, I thought, finishing second. Probably still getting to know him as our first season training him. It was my first time riding him, so I hope there's a bit of improvement there. Um, you know, he's got Gold Cup form with Albin Voto, who's 8-1. to one. You know, he was only being half length staying on. He went well on the better ground the other day. It'd be interesting. Probably appreciate a bit slower ground. Um, I actually sat on him the other morning. He's in great order. He seems to have come on for his run the other day. So, um, very much looking forward to it. We're under no illusion of what he's up against, but um, the horse deserves another crack at it, and he seems in great form. And his run the other day suggests no difference. So um, we'll go out there and give it a good go. He's an outsider, but um, one thing's for sure: he, he's in good form, and um, yeah, you know he should give his run in anyway. He has probably got his work cut out, but um, if he's not to be Santini, give us a one for the Gold Cup. Oh. Um, One, there's about eight, eight could win. Yeah, I, I really don't have a, a strong view on the race. I think Aplutard is the most likely winner. It's very unoriginal and very few horses have been beaten in a Gold Cup and then gone on to win it. But at this stage, I, I, I don't fancy anything. Something's got to win it, but I think something might be too quick for Galvin. So I'm, I'm siding with the favourite. Well, you know, we went for the treble on Aplutar for Haydock, uh, Dublin and the Gold Cup. So let's hope Aplutar doesn't win. Um, I, I, if it absolutely chucks it down on Wednesday, Thursday, I might uh, have a little bit on uh, Rob Pagai, um, just, just for the ground. And it will end off uh, a brilliant season for Venetia and Charlie Deutsch, best uh, jockey ever fence at the minute. Uh, both wrong. Galvin wins. Uh, simple. Right. Charity bet time. Joel and myself have been doing charity bets throughout this Road to Cheltenham series. I've got the best Antipos book. Uh, so let's see what this week's editions are. I will let you go first, Mr. Ross. All right. I've gone uh, Go Risk at All for 7 to 1. Sam Thomas has been on this morning. Uh, good risk at all for Sam Thomas. Coral Cup. Uh, Trippy entered uh, this time. Uh, 50 quid each way. Uh, if Green Book doesn't go, he'll get Charlie Deutsch. If Carl Road doesn't go, he'll get Sam Twist and Davis. That's it. And um, if rumours are to be believed, we couldn't get a decent enough conditional um, <laughs> for the other other race. Ah, right, OK. I'm going to go for Mount Ida as well in the Mare's Chase, the penultimate race of the festival, 5-2. to two. I think she's got a big chance in the National as well. She's beaten Ellie May. Uh, she's getting a bit of weight from her as well. So Mount Ida for Gordon Elliott in the Mare's Chase uh, for me. Uh, just a quick one. There isn't really much to talk about. My best performance from the weekend, I'd, or can risk, I'd guess. Or Night Salute, which one? No, I'll probably look in Ireland and the Bobby Joe. I'd say both any second now and this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, any second now. That was the first horse I put a line through. Yeah. Four and a four and a field. The other Mullins horse, I was like that. That, that'll win. Um, I thought oh, that will that'll be, that'll be off a yard today. <laughs> um, the JP Colours, that's going the Grand National and absolutely fantastic. Mm. I, I put that as my second best performance and I think I probably have to go for uh, Win My Wings uh, for Christian Williams at the weekend um, in the Ida Chase. The massive gamble on that horse and at no point throughout that race did you think they were in trouble here. No. Well, yeah, then thanks thanks for those. No connotations of Cheltenham. It's a Cheltenham show. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, OK. Well, I'll tell you what was... Uh, uh, Saudi Cup. How do you find the Saudi Cup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, uh, that's enough then for John. And don't forget, this weekend we've got Newbury and Kelso. Might be the odd smattering of handicap clues upcoming there, but we'll review those on uh, Monday uh, with uh, John because he's got to shoot off now for his Eurovision uh, rehearsal and he's Harley <laughs> Davidson. And you yeah. know, I, I, I thought you were going to say that Tanya had left this here last week. That's definitely <laughs> one of hers, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks Nick for joining as well we'll hear plenty more from more guys, uh, these guys on the run up uh, to the festival which is just two weeks away <laughs>